Starting from Corona 11, we have a new map for tiling. It's Corona Tile Map. 3ds Max already has its map, but Corona Tile Map has new interesting features that are worth to investigate. Let's dive into this quick overview. Ok, let's start by making sure that the UVW map modifier on the wall has a real world map sites enabled. Then add the Corona tile into the diffuse channel. Here we enable the same function and we'll see a preview directly in the viewport of what we can produce parametrically with this amazing tool. For example, by changing the width and height of these tiles, I can immediately achieve different looks. Additionally, we have a presets to obtain a different tile distribution. In this example, we'll use a stack bond preset, applying a light green color, which can be suitable for this type of bathroom. Let's see a preview. Let's begin by exploring, always in a parametric way, that we can, for instance, manage the distance between the tiles. This parameter is called gap. Let's write different values, and here on the right we can see a real-time preview result. Now let's look at another material. I have pressed some simple vertical tiles in the Corona tile map using the grey color. Another interesting parameter is the corner radius. This parameter allows us to manage rounded edges of the tiles, always in a parametric way. Here we can see some examples. By the way, we don't have to necessarily have all the tiles in the same color. We can add a Corona Multimap, set it to one single element, and assign it the gray with a variation in hue and gamma. We'll get a slightly different tiles, but don't forget to check the Tile ID option to produce the expected result. We can also produce a more creative version, setting, for example, vertical elements for the entire height of the wall in red with slight variations. Just let's fix the mapping and here's a bathroom with a bit more energy. Here we have another example, a bit more customized. In this case I use the tile map customizing the pattern. It's true that there are preset patterns, but with the custom option we can input our own values. And in the cast documentation you'll find an image that clearly explains how this customization works. You have the link in the description. Once I finished my pattern, I simply rotated the map by 45 degrees. To complete this video, I want to show you one last example. In this case, we have some Italian tiles, but for this example, let's take a closer look at the material editor in slate format so we can better understand how the various nodes are organized. Ok, here we have the base material, where we've added the tile map into the diffuse channel, and then a multimap but this time, instead of having a single color like before, we have five different maps representing different tiles. In case we are not satisfied with this random distribution, we can test different ones by changing the seed value. One interesting thing we could do in this case is use the same tile map to create reliefs. To do this, I duplicate the map disconnect it from the rest, so now we have two Corona tile maps that are basically identical in structure. However, in the second one I'll set the tiles to white and the gap to black, so we can use it as displacement map. In this context we can also see another option in Corona tile, which is the gap blur. 
This allows us to set gradients in the tile's edges, thus achieving these edges that can both enhance the detail and capture various reflections, increasing the richness of information and therefore photorealism. Remember that if you want more detail in the displacement, you can add a Corona displacement modifier, setting it to Get from Materials and Override to increase the definition. To complete, we can use the Viewport Preview to align the tiles and complete the tiling mapping. This new tool is available from Corona 11 and I think and I hope that in future it will be improved with the new amazing options.